Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to this uh, new episode of SLS Talk, a student lecture series organized by uh, SESC GSC. My name is Manoj Saki, and I'm your host today. And we have invited Hao Chen Li. He's a PhD first year student working in the lab, so-called Lili, I guess. I'm very happy to invite you, Hao Chen. And uh, his presentation uh, title will be Exploring Representation Label Augmentation for Code Search. Uh, and let me briefly introduce uh, him a bit. Hao Chun Li is uh, a first year student, uh, going to be a second year student very soon. His research interest lies in natural language processing combined with software engineering. He received his bachelor degree in July 2022. Uh, and prior to joining NTU, he was a research assistant in Microsoft Research Asia. So uh, without any further delay, Hao Chong, I think uh, I invite you for the presentation and, uh, and I request all the participants to mute themselves. And uh, if you have any queries, uh, you can ask uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, so Hao Chong, uh, you can start your presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be invited to the student talks. Uh, and my topic is exploring representation level augmentation for code search. Uh, this paper was accepted to EMLP 2022. Well, this paper focused on the task that was called uh, code search. So before we going into the details of the paper, I will first briefly introduce what code search is. Uh, the code search aims to retrieve the most relevant code fragments according to the given query. Uh, I will use this uh, figure as an example to explain. Uh, for example, if we have a query that says how to write a for loop in Python, and we have a fixed code base which contains a lot of uh, completed and uh, compatible codes in the code base, and we try to uh, calculate the similarity between the query and code. Uh, we first uh, use a neural query encoder to encode the query into the feature vectors, and correspondingly, we use another code encoder to embed all of the uh, code fragments in the code base into their correspondingly feature vectors. And then, since we now get the feature vectors of queries and codes, we could calculate the similarities between these vectors, like using, using like a cosine similarity or inner product. Uh, code search is very important in software development because it could improve the productivity of software developers significantly. Uh, for the code search, uh, there are many existing works that mainly focuses on the models. Uh, we can roughly split the stage into three parts. The first one is the traditional methods like TF-IDF or best matching 25, something like uh, something techniques, some techniques that heavily depend on the keyword matching techniques. And then as uh, neural networks come into, come into and attract a lot of attract attentions, uh, some famous neural models like convolutional neural networks, long short term memory, uh, recurrent neural networks are used in code search to get better representations of uh, queries and codes. And recently, uh, about in the past two years, uh, large pre trained models, uh, some transformer based between models come to the uh, view of researchers. Uh, with the help of a large amount of unlabeled data and the specifically designed uh, pre-trained tasks, uh, large pre-trained models could significantly outperform the previous traditional methods and deep neural, ne deep neural networks. And in this work, uh, we mainly focus on the process of Data augmentation. Data augmentation is very uh, important in all of the deep learning based methods because it could improve the robustness and uh, 
a performance of neural networks in nearly all of the tasks. Uh, but existing augmentation methods uh, have mainly two drawbacks uh, because they are applied to raw data. So they are resource consuming and limited. I will use the right figure to explain these two drawbacks. First, as I mentioned, uh, these existing methods are applied to raw data. So they are raw data level, which means that to get the augmented vector, the, uh, the augmented version of the original code, we need to first apply the raw data level augmentation to get the augmented code. And then we, we need to use the code encoder to encode the augmented code twice to get the augmented vector, which means in other words, uh, if we want to get the original vector and augmented vector, we need to encode the original code and augmented one twice, which is really resource consuming. And the other drawback is that the usage is limited. For example, uh, one of the augmentation methods is that we change the four loops in the, ori in the original code into while loops to get the, to get the so-called augmented code. But what if there are no uh, for loops in the code? Under such situations, we cannot apply such uh, augmentation methods. So that's why uh, we say that uh, existing methods are sometimes limited. To address the above two drawbacks, uh, we turn our site into the representation level augmentation, which directly uh, apply augmentations on the original vector. Uh, as a result, we don't need to uh, encode the original and augmented code twice, and which heavily reduces the uh, cost of resource. And, uh, and the other uh, benefit is that uh, the representation level augmentation could be applied under any situations, not like the limited one. Uh, well, uh, before our work, there are uh, two uh, representation level augmentation methods uh, in previous studies. Uh, well, uh, for, simpl for simplicity, uh, in the later part of my presentations, I will just uh, call the representation level augmentation as augmentation, okay? Uh, the two augmentation methods are linear interpolation and stochastic perturbation. The linear interpolation is just uh, the commonly used linear per per interpolation. Uh, uh, we use a lambda uh, to multiply the original representation uh, H and one minus uh, lambda to multiply the uh, noisy representation uh, H prime to get the augmented uh, representation H plus. And, for st uh, and here we need to know that the lam lambda falls into the range from zero to Y. This is the this is just the definition of linear interpolation. And for the stochastic perturbation, uh, we randomly deactivated some features in the original representation. As we can see here, we use a, a generated mask vector to multiply the original vector. And some, uh, and this mask was uh, consists, uh, consists of zero and one. Uh, that was sampled from a, uh, uh, binom binomial distribution. And for those positions with zero, we consider these cons features uh, as deactivated features. And based on these two existing methods, linear interpolation and stochastic perturbation, we unify these two methods to propose a general format, which could be described in as this equation. Uh, we can see it's very, uh, we can see that this for general format is very similar to linear interpolation. And we can just interpret this equation as combining the original representation H with another sampled represent, noisy representation H prime to get the final augmented representation H plus. And here the coefficients alpha and beta are used to control how much content, how much information of the uh, original representation we reserve. Okay, so based on this uh, general format, we further propose 
three novel uh, representation level augmentation methods. They are linear extrapolation, binary interpolation, and Gaussian scaling. Uh, for linear extrapolation, we just extend the range of lambda. Uh, recall that in linear interpolation, the lambda falls into the range from zero to y. And here we extend the range to some values that are greater than one. And this we could control, uh, we could construct H, H plus that was out of the line of H and H prime. And for binary interpolation, it is uh, something similar to stochastic, stochastic perturbation. We also generate two mask vectors. And you can see that one property of these two uh, mask vectors is that uh, they are uh, they are mutual inhib inhibit inhibited. For example, here if the for the first mass vector, if here is one, then the corresponding position of another uh, mass vector should be zero. And we could interpret this equation as uh, just combining the features, totally swapping the features of noisy representation H prime to the original uh, with the original representation H. This is the so-called binary interpolation. Uh, and the last one, Gaussian scaling, uh, we just uh, uh, multiply the features in each position with uh, small coefficients that was sampled from a normal distribution. We need, uh, we want that the model could distinguish the uh, scaling one with the original one. Uh, if you are interested in the details of how to calculate these five types of uh, augmentation methods, you may refer to the original paper. But I, I want to uh, emphasize that uh, this general format is all you need because this all of these five augmentation methods can be uh, very easy, very simply uh, derived from this general format. And hopefully you may still uh, figure out some other uh, augmentation methods out of this general format. Uh, after we propose these uh, three new methods and the general format, we further theoretically analyze, analyze the benefits of applying augmentation. Uh, uh, let's go to the theorem one first. Uh, optimizing the info NCE loss. The info NCE loss is the widely used uh, loss functions in contrastive learning, and it is widely adopted in co-search models too. Uh, so optimizing info NCE loss improves lower bounds of mutual information I for a positive pair, which means that the information for a positive pair is lower bounded by log B minus L. And this is the conclusion in previous studies, and it is uh, widely proved that this is true. And with the representation level augmentation, uh, we can improve the tighter lower bounds. Uh, as you can see, if we uh, apply representation level augmentation, the mutual information for a positive pair should be greater, should be lower bounded by this term. And uh, under most, uh, at most cases, this com complicated term should be greater than log B minus L. Thus, uh, we argue that uh, if we apply representation level augmentation, we improve the tighter lower bounds of mutual information for a positive pair. And one thing you need to note is that for the mutual information of a positive pair, the higher, the better. And this is the logic behind the benefits of what uh, augmentation methods bring to this co-search models. Uh, for the proof of the theorem two, uh, which is, uh, you could, uh, if you're interested, you can check them in the appendix of the original paper. The proof is not that difficult. You just uh, need to split the, uh, split the loss into four parts, the original query and original code, Aug uh, the original query and the augmented code, the augmented query and the original code, and the augmented query and the augmented code. And you just need to apply to apply this theorem one four times and try to uh, take out the alphas here and betas, the, uh, the 
coefficients in the general format, and you could derive this uh, theorem. You could derive and prove this theorem too. Uh, well, uh, then we conduct experiments to empirically uh, evaluate the uh, effective of our proposed uh, representation level augmentation. Uh, we evaluate, uh, we apply the augmentation methods on three models, Roberta code, Codebird, and Graph Codebird, which uh, they, uh, they are three most uh, recently SOTA models, over six uh, data sets. Ruby, JavaScript, Go, Python, Java, and PHP. And we can see that uh, with representation level augmentation, it can consistently improve model performance. And we further uh, visualize the vector distributions to try to uh, explain the effects in with related to the vector distribution. Uh, as you can see, the left, the left figure, this, this uh, blue dots, they are roughly uh, uniformly distributed in a circle. However, uh, if we apply representation level augmentation, the vectors are uniformly, uh, uniformly distributed all over the hypersphere instead of just uh, distributed along nearly along a circle. So uh, we argue that this is the benefit uh, with related to the vector distribution. We, uh, the, model could, uh, the model could model the relationships, the similarities between queries and codes by leveraging the norms of the vectors instead of just angles. Um, in other words, as you can see, if the, all of the vectors are, uh, roughly distributed along circle, their norms are really similar. So under, sit under this situation, the so-called uh, the, the evaluation metric, uh, let's say inner product degraded as cosine similarity. However, if, there, uh, if model could better leverage the norm property of vectors, they could uh, model more complicated relationships between queries and codes. Uh, you may, uh, and then you may have a sense that this method is very general and to be applied to other tasks. Yes, that's true. We also uh, evaluate our methods on passage retrieval tasks. It's very similar to code search. Uh, instead of retrieving a code fragment according to the given query, the passage retrieval uh, tries to retrieve a passage, a paragraph. Uh, based on the given query. Uh, we also evaluate the uh, evaluate uh, augmentation methods on two models, Distill, BERT, and Roberta, on two uh, public benchmark data sets, IFRQA 2018 and NF Corpus. And we can see the same um, improvement on passage retrieval tasks. Okay, so that's, that's the end of my presentation. Yeah, thank you. Ao Chen, uh, thank you so much. Uh, very uh, comprehensive uh, explanation from your side. Uh, let me uh, request uh, the audience, if you have any queries, uh, either you can write in the chat box, or you can just unmute yourself and uh, you can ask a question to Hao Chen uh, directly. So, but, uh, but before doing that one, uh, let me quickly ask a question. Uh, what, uh, uh, Hao Chen, is it like, uh, what do you mean by code search in itself? Like, what is code search? Is it like, similar to, uh, you know, trying to search some text uh, in a Google, or is it different than that? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, I can answer you, answer your question from two uh, perspectives. The first one is that for us, for our researchers or general people or some uh, computer science novices or some software developer novices, mm -hmm. uh, this is just something like you search some code in GitHub because uh, 
many functions, many basic functions are already written by some previous uh, previous uh, software developers, right. and you don't need to re write them again, and you just need to search and reuse them or mm -hmm. uh, simply uh, re revise them a little bit. Right. Uh, this highly reduces the cost of uh, human labors. And from the uh, perspective of uh, big tech companies, you know that's something uh, recently some internet companies, their, their original uh, secret uh, confidential uh, code base may contain uh, billions of lines of code. And you also need to reuse the already constructed uh, functionalities in your in the code base of your company and you because sometimes if you just create a new api and it may have some conflicts with the existing ones and thus incur many new bugs so you need to reuse the already existed uh, apis in the code base right right thank you and uh so uh so can i say the work that we have done in in this uh, project work let's say will be helpful to the google source as well yes 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 but nowadays like uh, for example even the chat gpt uh, if you have used that one uh, probably you could even even give a give a uh, you know uh, give a give a command to generate uh, a code in general so do, in your opinion, like uh, the language model that ChatGPT uses and the one that you are uh, working on, are they somehow related? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, some re recent uh, models proposed by Google's like ChatGPT or GPT-3, mm -hmm. they have already used some techniques in code search. Uh, okay. The training, okay. the training process is something mm -hmm. Uh, similar to the training in code search of code search models. Oh, okay. So, so, so the the idea that you are actually uh, implemented, you have implemented in this research work, uh, is is the the main point is the representation level itself yes. when when augmentation when augmentation is done there. So yes. how you how you realize that probably this augmentation uh, kind of thing. So augmentation basically can improve the, the, the language model itself. How did you realize that part? Okay. Uh, uh, generally, uh, data augmentation methods uh, construct some noisy examples that is similar to the correct examples, but not the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the learning process, the model needs to needs to distinguish the, the noisy one, the augmented one, the augmented one. Uh, they are just the same as the original one. Uh, during this process, the models are becoming more robust mm -hmm. to uh, to like uh, filter out irrelevant noises in the examples. Uh, okay. So 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 then you realize that probably the representation label uh can also i mean even in the representation level you can improve uh the model itself yes yes uh okay so so if i if i say that uh the examples that you have given the 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 database that you have used so what is what is what is uh, in the you know uh, i was thinking of like what other techniques they have used, uh, especially for the for these uh, kind of models, and then for this kind of data set? In the previous, for example, I mean, if I consider this code BERT, okay, so is, okay. It, is it like uh, it, it's a model? Because I'm not familiar with this. Uh, uh, yes, these yes, models. So they they are uh, they are the models, right? Yes, yes, they are. The they models. have used the different techniques than the one that you have used. Uh, sorry, pardon. Uh, I, I mean, uh, do they have used the different techniques than than the one that you have used in your work? I mean, the uh, technique or uh, you know the training. The story. The story is that uh, our uh, representation level augmentation methods uh, mm -hmm. are orthogonal to the 
models, which means that our augmentation methods can be applied to any code search models. So we just select the three recent best code search models, okay. Roberta, Colbert, and Graph Colbert to evaluate okay. that, uh, yes, our augmentation methods have benefits, have effects. Okay, and have shown the shown the improvement in the result itself. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So, what is the further improvement in your work? What might be the further improvement in the future? Oh, yes. Uh, the further improvement is that. Hmm. Uh, okay, I will use this uh, mm -hmm. page to explain. Uh, okay. uh, the augmentation, the augmentation should be semantic preserving. Just like I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. the augmentation met, uh, augmentations tries to create a noisy augmented sample that is similar to the original one, but not the same. Uh, which means that the augmentation should not be too severe. Uh, mm -hmm. Or let's say the augmented uh, example should not be too different from the original one. Otherwise, it uh, violates the policy that uh, of the uh, augmentation. But uh, as we can see, for example, this lambda, like I mentioned in the linear interpolation, the lambda falls into the range from zero, zero to, to one. one. Uh, mm -hmm. But what about if we set lambda as, uh, let's say, 10? So there is some result that H class should be mm -hmm. very different from the original original representation right, age. Right, right. Yes. Uh, well, uh, in our work, in this work, we cannot uh, allow this situation to, hap uh, to happen, but uh, we could extend, we could extend the uh, calculation that uh, instead of consider, uh, uh, let's say we can use soft labels. Uh, in, the ex in this work, we consider uh, the augmented one and the original one, they are told they are the same. But uh, oh. uh, if we set lambda too big, let's say uh, the, um, the augmented one uh, will not be very similar with the original one anymore. Uh, under, situ under such situations, we don't consider they are the same, but instead we use sub labels to model the relationship between the very different augmented one with the original one. Let's say, uh, let's say maybe we don't consider them as, this, as the same, but we uh, set the similarity score of these two uh, as 0 0.9 or 0 mm -hmm. 0.5, something like that. We use soft labels to model the relationship between the augmented one and the original one. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Ashod, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation and I, I personally really enjoyed your presentation and and I, I really appreciate uh, you know the area that you are working on. And I wish you uh, good luck uh, for the future. You. And I guess uh, you're uh, probably in the second year, you're also planning to go for QE as well. And yes. I wish you best of luck for QE thank you. exam in advance as well. And uh, Actually, this season we are having like this is holiday season basically. So, so I wish uh, uh, you know uh, a new year, Merry Christmas, belated Merry Christmas, and uh, New Year twenty twenty three to you and to all the audience as well. So uh, we are gonna upload this video to YouTube channel, and I'll be sharing this one to all uh, all the friends out there. And if they have any queries. Uh, they can, I think, contact you. We will be sharing your your paper link to uh, in the YouTube as well. Awesome. So uh, thank you, thank you guys, thank you everyone uh, for thank joining you. this SLS talk. And uh, in the next year, uh, 2023, we'll be hosting few more uh, few more SLS talk also. So uh, I guess our next SLS talk is basically on uh, on I think 11th January. Uh, please do join us uh, and do support us in the future as well. Hao Chong, once again, uh, from my uh, side and on behalf of uh, SCACGSC, I would like to express uh, thanks to thanks to you. Please, uh, we keep in touch. Hao Chong, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a good uh, evening. Bye-bye and take care. Thank Bye -bye. you, guys. Thank you.